a good relationship, and we're saying this to you in a powerful way, this relationship that you're talking about has the possibility, probability, certainty. In other words, we can feel a very strong vibrational to be a dynamic, fantastic, eternally satisfying experience for both of you. But you've got to make a decision and line up with it. And what's going on with each of you is you're waiting for the evidence of the other one's decision rather than either one of you individually making that determination. We would like to say to everyone in every relationship, don't wait around for the other one to make the commitment. You decide if this is something that you want, line up with it and make lists of positive aspects all day, every day until you are completely calibrated with your desire. Because when you are completely calibrated with your desire, your bag of marbles contains a vibration that is offering that's got enough momentum. The probability, possibility, probability, really certainty of evoking that from the other is off the charts. What is the insecurity that makes you not decide? I believe that I have decided uh, in the past. And uh, and then what? You know, what happens is basically I do what you just said. Yeah. Let's say a year ago I started listening to your talks about relationships. Yeah. And you share something along those lines. Yeah. And You're stubborn that way. Yeah. And, it was, and it, it was quite helpful. It was a different approach than what I was used to, to working with negativity and stuff. Um, and then what happened? What happened was it just seems almost impossible that the kinds of things that I actually want to experience in a relationship, I can bring forth from her. Well, the thing is... It's just not, not happening minutely, maybe. Here's what does happen, and maybe it's not the right thing. We're not trying to talk you in or out of anything, but this we know for sure. If you focus upon the aspects that are a match for you, and you let that be the basis of the vibration that you're offering, other matches join that. But if you are aware of matches and mismatches and matches and matches and mismatches and matches and mismatches, then it isn't what the other one is doing in terms of matching, it's that you're not matching your own desire. Look at it this way. It's like here you are with a set of thoughts that you think on a regular basis, and some of them are about the wonderfulness of the way the two of you are getting along, and some of them are about the concerns you have in the areas that you're not getting along. So you've got this mixed bag and you're attracting some of all of it. But let's say that you clarify your position because you want to feel good, not because you're trying to manipulate somebody, not because you're trying to make something happen, but because you have an inner being who is fixated on the positive aspects of this person. So you decide to calibrate to your inner being who is fixated on the positive aspects of this person, not just positive aspects in general, positive aspects that you have specifically picked out as you've moved through life and as you've moved through this relationship and others. Your inner being really is contouring to those things that you care about. So if you calibrate to your inner being who is in a place of certainty, then there's no mixed vibration going on within you and your point of attraction is very powerful, which means your win-win is much more likely. I really, I just feel like it's almost impossible for me to get to that place now with the relationship, that place of certainty. That's because you're letting what you're witnessing be your point of calibration rather than what you desire. In other words, if you said to us, I've had enough, I don't want it anymore, we would say, we do not believe you. Yeah, it's, I, I don't really say that personally. I don't feel that way. What do you say about the relationship? I want it, I don't want it. Pick one, just for fun. Okay. Um... I want it. I want it. No qualification. Not I want it under these terms. I want it. You want to play the game a little bit more with us about this? Uh, I can. I, I did maybe want to kind of share some specifics of what happened. We're happy uh, to listen to you. Yeah. Um, what, what happened, let, let's, so going back to, you know, I started listening to this kind of idea from you, uh, and it's basically felt like maybe a little over a year. It's like I'm really doing everything I can to be, uh, you know, non-reactive. Almost everyone in the room would say that, including Esther, I'm doing all I can do. And our answer to all of you is, you're doing all you can do from where you stand. Your path of least resistance is resistance-free, as you can allow it to be so far. But as what you want doesn't happen suddenly, or maybe even gradually enough for you over four years, your clarification gets stronger and stronger, and your ability to be more precise in what you attract does too. In a very general way, we'd like to say, we would like to say this, your desires are eternal, your desires are eternal. Relationships are eternal. You can decide that this is too hard, but don't blame it on what the other person is or is not doing. Let it be about your ability to clarify. And if you're saying to us, it is impossible for me to hold the thought of what I want, given what I'm observing, then we say, 
Most people are very conditional in the way they feel. If they're looking around and seeing what they want to see, they feel better than if they're seeing what they don't. But creation isn't about taking score of the evidence. Creation is about making a decision and then lining up with that decision. Hard to hear? So the way it's unfolded saying. for me was, is I'm getting better at that. And, I, and what I'm getting better at is the non-reactivity, is the... Um, when you say non-reactivity, I mean do you mean you don't say anything, you don't use words or try to convince, but we want to know what your vibrational reactivity is, which is evidence to you by how you feel. Right. So I may have a vibrational reactivity, but let's say I do my best to clear that up. Yeah. So I leave, I do whatever. Good. And, uh, and, you know, countless times that's worked. And I come back and happy face and happy feeling, you know, it's that's cleared up. And it's like I can do that for a few days and then something she does or doesn't do triggers that again. And I go try to clean it up and I can't. And I feel like I would like to have the space to be able to just like say, this is bugging me. Say it. I do say it, but what's happening over the course of, again, over a year, and this is definitely related to a job she started where she's just constantly on and stuff, she just can't take it. It's like she just explodes, and like the energy is very much like, how dare you even have this concern? And then she shuts down for like three days. Before you go any further, uh -huh. because you've convinced us that you should go screaming into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> but before you go further, a question is popping up all over the room. And certainly you've come to it many times and people have said it to us in a format like this many, many times. When is enough enough? When is enough enough? How long do I have to wait for what I want? And it's not easy for you to hear that there's no waiting if you can be a selective sifter and predominantly focus upon what you want. But here's the thing. Just stay with us. You're really going to like this. We're not trying to make something happen one way or the other. We just want you to understand the physics of deliberate creation, the actual absolute formulas of how it works. So when you have a desire, it is a natural, not just human tendency. It's what you all came here for. You didn't say, I'll go be human and I'll gather desires and I'll focus myself into alignment and I will never ask for the manifestation or the complete fruition of what I want. I don't need the realization, the actualization or the materialization. You didn't say that. You said, that's why I am physical. I'm going to focus thoughts into things. I'm going to focus dreams into reality. How corny does that sound? I'm going to find what I want and I'm going to bring it about. You also did not say, it's going to follow any particular path and be with any particular person. You said, I'm going to focus and find desires, and I'm going to bring those desires into reality, into something that is tangible, seeable, hearable, smellable, tasteable, touchable. So manifestation's a big deal. In fact, it's the big deal that most humans want before they're even willing to consider that there's a vibrational world and that they are vibrational creators. Most people on this planet do not want to hear about vibration or about the law of attraction or about their point of attraction, even though everything about how they feel all day, every day is only about that. Most people don't want to hear it. They just want to hear, how can I get the girl I want? And how can I get the money I want? And how can I get the car I want? And we say, those are very short-lived enthusiasms unless you understand how you focused and how it came to you. What you do want is a steady unfolding of something that feels better. We will say to you unequivocally, if you have focused and tried, and we can feel your purposeful focus, and it is not getting better, you don't find yourself feeling increasingly better, even though what you're really looking for is slightly delayed, then we so want you to hear this from us. If you were really doing what you're telling us that you're doing, she would have moved out of the way and somebody else would have moved in. Well, but you're, it's kind of like that did happen, and I felt extremely uncomfortable. But instead, you've got enough of what's going on. You see, this is what keeps people from getting what they want. Looking at what is keeps it from getting better. And so you got a tiger by the tail. We'll acknowledge it. You've got someone who doesn't seem like she's trying hardly at all to be a cooperative component. And it's taken a lot of clarity on your part to even focus in the way that you are. If we were standing in your physical shoes, we wouldn't give up on this yet. If she calls you and says, I'm done, we'd call her back and say, I'm not. If she says, I don't want anything to do with you, we'd say, I want everything to do with you. If she says, I don't like anything about you, we'd say, I like some things about you. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. See, this is the advantage that your inner being has. Your inner being knows what you've lived and what you've asked for and what's in your vortex. Your inner being knows that. And your inner being knows what the path of least resistance is to get to the fruition of what you want. And we're saying to you, this relationship is worth hanging in. Look at it this way. Look at it as win-win. But we're going to add one more win. So play with this just for a little. Win-win means you win by pointing at what you want. Yeah, I want this relationship. You win-win because your inner being is already pointed there. So when you point there, now it is win-win. You and your inner being are on the same vibrational wavelengths. And you are infused with energy and clarity and enlivenment. It feels good to be in sync with your inner being about something that you have been very sure about. And you've convinced your inner being about it. And your inner being isn't as quick to bail out over this and that and this and that as most humans are. So your inner being is hanging in there with your abundance, with your physical conditions, with your relationships. In other words, when you ask, it is given. When you ask, it is given. When you ask, it is given. But you say, well, you're giving it to me in the vortex, but I don't want it in the vortex. I want it in the physical. And we say, enjoy it in the vortex. Enjoy it in the vortex. Enjoy the alignment with your inner being. Enjoy the win-win you've got with your inner being when you focus upon the positive aspects of this girl. Enjoy that win-win. And every now and again, you'll catch her at a less contradicted moment when she wins with you for a moment. And she'll be able to see what's in the vortex that you have calibrated to, too. She's not wanting away from you. She's wanting relief from the confusion that she's got going on. But it doesn't have anything to do with you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I think she'd disagree, but... <laughs> <laughs> she might say different, but Terry Cole Whitaker wrote a book many years ago. Esther didn't read the book. <clears throat> because we encouraged her not to read any books. We encouraged her not to make confusion within herself about where she was getting what she's getting. But she liked the title. And the title is, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. What you think of me is none of my business. Because what you think of me is more about what's going on with you than it is about what's going on with you and me. In other words, there's momentum that's already been in place there. So we know we say we don't tell people what to do and we don't. But we often say if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would do blah, blah, blah. And if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would do blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next